Good morning. Welcome to Information Architecture. Hopefully today will be a better day from a uh, internet point of view and no fire alarms. Testing, that usually only happens once a month on Wednesday. So morning, Jeff. Um, I hope your week was good. So here's the plan for today. So um, I would like to finish a few patterns when it comes to navigation. Uh, but again, the uh, the entire lesson lecture is available uh, online as well on Collaborate. And uh, and then I will also talk about the big project, the main project. So it is we um, the big project is due on March 10th. So we have like two and a half weeks or almost three weeks left into the class. So um, that is a big project. And that is the main project for this class for 30 percent of your marks. So uh, it's a big piece, but um, none of it will be unfamiliar. I think you all know the brand and uh, the steps and what the project consists of is everything that we've done in class, but now we do it all for uh, for a big uh, a big website, mobile responsive website. So um, let's, I would say, let's keep going with uh, yesterday's presentation. I don't know if there are any questions about any of the content from yesterday. Uh, I'm happy to, uh, to answer any question that might have, I'm just gonna add the file here. And thank you for submitting the uh, IA for Nightwood. Uh, I have had a chance to go through all submissions and provide a lot of feedback. Feedback was useful and I obviously expect everybody to incorporate the feedback into their, their work. Very, very important uh, for the big project to incorporate all feedback that you have received from all the assignments. And uh, and if you do have any questions, I'll be more than happy to uh, to help and assist. So I'm just going to be loading. We're going to look at patterns. Are there any questions about navigations or any of the patterns or navigation elements that we've discussed yesterday? There are a lot of patterns, there are a lot of examples out there for navigation. So uh, it's about making choices based on your user, based on the business uh, priorities, the business objectives, and uh, and then sticking to the standard and try to uh, not disrupt the user when it comes to navigation. It's a very important element. You are gonna be spending, you spend so much time on designing the best IA. If people are not able to get to your content, then that would be a point of failure. So we want to make sure that we make the good choices for the users. But there are a lot of examples that we can use. And uh, the search search is an element of navigation. It's really mostly for people that are pretty clear on what they want, or they still can have a very vague question. But uh, browsing and searching are important elements, uh, as we've discussed. Primary versus local. So as I said, don't get too caught up in nomenclature, but you will have to label your navigation. So make a choice and then be consistent. Um, I share with you some examples of what those uh, terminology can be. Primary, secondary, global, uh, footer, utility. Those are the ones that I use, but you will have uh, a choice. You'll make a choice and then eventually you'll be training your stakeholder on those as well. So let's go to patterns uh, quickly. So common navigation patterns. Well, patterns probably evolve over time. They will evolve because of devices. They will evolve because of user behavior as well as new technology. But I would say that there are many examples and many patterns that you can use, you can rely on, and not feel that you have to reinvent the wheel. You just want to make sure that people are actually getting into your content. And uh, what's important in navigation is be consistent. It's like anything else. If you're going to use labels, be consistent. If you're going to use a page layout, be consistent. And your navigation should be the same navigation throughout your site. You shouldn't introduce different navigation patterns based on which section that, uh, which level that you are or which, on which section of your site. So let's say level one, Nightwood, About Us, should have the same navigation pattern as uh, tickets and shows for example. So you don't want to introduce different navigation pattern on uh, throughout the experience. That will be a big, uh, a big no. So in terms of patterns, you've seen uh, this is a good example of engine hosting. So they're using tab at the top. Uh, they look like tab in here in this area. 
and uh, and you're very very familiar with those. We've seen them. So this is probably old Amazon. I think this is very very old. Um, and then you have Expedia, that is an old system, but they're kind of using tabs in this area <clears throat> as well. They're still uh, consistent. And this is very typical of pretty much any vacation search or flight search. Your priorities of the business and, uh, and what you want to focus on. And you can also make a choice. In this example, they've, dis they've defaulted to flight only because that is probably what most people are buying on Expedia. And it was the same story at Sunwing too. So we had, uh, we had vacations, all-inclusive vacation, Air Canada. going to share so Air Canada they're using uh, the tabs as well so vacation packages is 80% of the business and in flight and hotel which is not all inclusive then they also have a tab for Europe and Canada tours, hotels, cruises. So depending on your products, this is how people can actually navigate. And then I would say they also have at the top, they have the logo for home and then they have their product navigation, their main navigation. So level one, book now, get inspired, find deals, travel info when you book, when you have a, a reservation. And then they have the typical utility bar, right? Contact us, français, language choices, and sign in, a login, or welcome Eve. So these are you, these are across pretty all industry. And then they have the the tap system, and then um, and then they have some highlights on the homepage to take to specific sections. They have what looks like a carousel, and then they have their footer navigation. So we can say that this is uh, their footer navigation. So about us, career, travel, cookie, uh, terms and conditions, terms of use. So they're surfacing those items that in your IA you had on the specific vertical, like about us for some of you, you have careers, you also included privacy and cookies uh, in there. Then they have media help, telephone number, and they have subscribed to our newsletter and the social. So this is, I would say, this is very typical of a footer navigation that people would expect to see. Um, and, uh, and we all know that there's a very small amount of people that reach to footer navigation, but then um, you will know that you could have access to your stats. And also the footer navigation is consistent on all pages. So let's look at more patterns. You would hope I could actually navigate directly from here. Ooh, but I have to scroll. Okay, so Expedia we've seen. Uh, the, the tab menu. So they have, I would say, these gallery bike, bell your bike about us and support. Uh, that is their navigation in that site. They're using big. Uh, it looks like big images that you could just send. You probably get feedback on when you roll over your mouse. You probably get feedback that you can click in animation. If you have any of this in your Nightwood or Zoo, then you can uh, illustrate it and you can also explain that there'll be a uh, rollover or there'll be feedback to the user. So, these I would say, uh, when we look at which I think is our shoes, then they have. This almost looks like a German or something, or Russian, I don't know. This is where my language lacks. Uh, if it was in French, it would be a different story, but they're kind of using like a tab system in here, in this area, and then they're using these categories, subcategories, Swedish. Awesome, thank you, Nelly. Uh, and then they have, when you roll over a section, it looks like, I, I wonder though, I don't know if the behavior, so I think this is selected, and then, Exposed, and then it looks like this also gets exposed at the same time. So these, this is a big menu, but this is just another way to show um, as, uh, and then you, it's women, I believe, and for men, to show how they've done their navigation, and it's a top across, 
and then the mega menu. So we call these mega menu, mega menu as well. We've seen them all. And this is where you see your level two and level three and sometimes even level four as well. So, um, and then footer, we talk about the footer nav. So there are a lot of examples of footer nav that people presentation on what the footer nav will be or will look like. Um, again, drop downs, you're all familiar with drop downs. So I don't think I'm teaching you much, anything new in here about the different patterns that you will have, but you just have to be consistent. These I find very tricky, the fly out menus uh, on mobile particularly, but in here, sometimes I find it very tricky. Uh, and I'm sure you've experienced, like from the moment that you start moving to this area, sometimes if you just go down a bit, then you lose it, and then it comes like a chase, chasing game. I don't really big, I don't really like uh, the fly up menus. I find the left one. I find the ones at the top usually probably simpler, but uh, there's always that risk that they actually uh, disappear on you. The hamburger menu is a is a I think a very popular item for mobile devices. But there are some issues with them in terms of discover, like people finding them, being visible, and also hiding a lot of sometimes important menu. But you could you could say that you will have you will use the hamburger the hamburger uh, menu for maybe your secondary items, your utility or your secondary item, and then expose your product as as well. So that is a, a pattern that I have seen that. Uh, actually work very well for me on apps is the plus sign. So you'll have elements of the footer or that are persistent and sometimes you'll have a plus sign and then when you plus it expands and you have more options that you can choose. I actually, this is a new pattern I think uh, and uh, it works very well for me on, our, on, my, on the apps that I have used. I don't have studies that shows the efficiency but uh, that may be a pattern that you may want to choose as well. The dryers, full Yao screen. So I don't know if this is still the setup for Yao, but they have uh, the navigation exposed. And again, we know that exposure that is good for recall, for recognition instead of recall. So you show the items, but then eventually I'm supposed that when you pick restaurants, then they will maybe go back to the top and you can expand and see more and you see your content. So that is also another way that you can do. And uh, and then I don't know if Yelp, I don't have the app. I don't know if they have items to the bottom in here too, persistent or consistent, or this is it. Then you have these guys that have the burger and they have like what looks like menu items as well, level one, barbecue, breakfast as well. So you just have to be very consistent. And then fast, facet, I don't know, facetted, facet navigation. So I think I, I use facet navigation, but when it's, in the past and it's facetted. Uh, so these are your filters. So we all are familiar, we can do filtering. This is where you have your category, your subcategory, and then uh, filters that you can apply. And then there's, uh, these can be very tricky. Um, for example, what happens if I don't select then, uh, or if I select, do I see the other ones or not? Like there's that select and unselect and what's included and not included. And then what do you have to refresh and no refresh as well? Or do they just update automatically? There's probably a question of load and speed and everything here. Um, so if you have that level of details for that wood and zoo, great. But I don't think that I expect that much of details. That will come in your specification. But these are all things that you have to consider uh, as well when you do this. But I would assume and uh, when you select this, and you go refresh, then you're only going to see the multinautic and you're not going to see anything else. So you're kind of like limiting to, uh, and then you're excluding everything else, but by default, it's all shown. It's a question of mindset what the user would actually expect. Then Kijiji has something similar, and then the breadcrumbs. We all know about the breadcrumbs. They're very useful for meaningful reason, visibility of the system. I can actually navigate back, and people do use these items. Uh, uh, so they serve multiple purposes, and they also tell you where you are, where you are in the, at any given time. But probably also have you know the section that you're in as highlighted so that you know visually. But this site doesn't do it. So I think in pagination. So pagination. There's many ways of doing pagination, uh, and then we also know that we have infinite infinite scrolling as well. Uh, and uh, I don't know if I've included a reading about infinite scrolling or not, but 
these will be things that you would learn and you would test uh, eventually to see which one is more effective than the other. But I think the infinite scrolling uh, from a user, one of the challenges that could be with it is that you never know when it's going to be finished. If at least you can show them the number of items on the list, I think that's probably a good uh, a good place. Um, but how do you navigate it and how do you, uh, how do you go back to what you think is a page that is maybe more relevant for content more relevant? Perhaps you need to have the facet or the filter to help someone to reduce that list that seems to be uh, huge and infinite and humongous. And, uh, and then users often have the feeling of fearing that they're missing on something. And they may want to go up to the bottom of the list to see if they've seen everything. And that's I think that's probably the thing with infinite scrolling is you don't know if you've seen everything that you should see and you may have a feeling that you're missing out on a deal. So let's say if you're looking for the best deal and the best vacation, unless you have a clear filter that can say sort by from cheapest to uh, to most expensive, the cheapest, but there might be times where you may think that you're missing out on something. But many, many examples to use and then you have to be uh, thinking about mobile and how people paginate it and more, navigate through the pages on mobile as well. With everything else happening, these are things that you need to, uh, to think about and be aware of. And then you can obviously have hybrids, but if you're using different way of navigating, and of course you're going to have drop downs, you're going to have pagination, you're going to have maybe fly out uh, uh, throughout, just be consistent so that there are no surprises. Okay. And you're going to build an I, you're going to build navigation and uh, you're going to learn from it. Then you'll be able to adjust. You're going to get stats, data. So hopefully you have tagging to be able to tag uh, engagement with those, uh, those elements, that navigation. You'll know who's using the navigation, who's using the filter, not using the filter. You'll have a good sense of percentage of people that do. Uh, you may be able to do some A-B testing and you should, moving the filters or changing the label of some filters and seeing the impact on uh, on your uh, on your choices and then you build you rebuild and you learn and uh, and then you optimize this is really just the other, the only way to do it metropolitan bakery had uh that we've seen this this is from sarah and then sarah had different ways that she shared with us that you can design the uh the navigation she did a very good job and we had a little class exercise but we're not going to do it our exercise will be the lab for this week which is your uh, defining the navigation for, uh, for Nightwood, that will be uh, our lab for, for today. So these are the patterns. We pretty much cover everything when it comes to navigation. So that means we have time for labs and we also have time for the big projects. So on Tuesday, I don't think there'll be new material. So uh, we're getting close to the end of the module. So, and the big project is a big piece. Are there any questions about navigations or patterns? Okay, so yes, the uh, the flyout menus can be tricky from time to time, definitely. Okay, so for the lab, for this week's lab, you have to take your Nightwood IA and you have to uh, define design, sketch out, design a, a navigation for uh, for the lab. You do not have to submit the lab, but I will, uh, but I will hopefully be able to see some of your sketches today. And uh, if not, maybe even on Tuesday, or I may reach out to individuals and ask that you share your uh, lab uh, with me so that I can give feedback as well. And uh, it's really a practice. Take it, take it as a practice, but the, uh, there's the submission for your zoo, which is the next week. That is uh, where you should probably be focusing most of your effort, but I will do my best to be able to give you feedback on your sketch for Nightwood Theater as well. So um, the instructions we went over yesterday, the big project, how many people do we have? We only have seven people. So it is being recorded and I will probably gonna talk about more about the big project. But for those of you that are here and thank you for coming, uh, the big project, so the big project, 30 project, you'll have the skills, you'll take the skills you've learned and practice in your other assignment and you combine this into one single assignment that includes cart sorting, information architecture and navigation design for a responsive website. So this is a group project. And uh, the company 
I think it's Jesus, really I have a question. Yes. Okay. Um, I got an unsat on my IA, um, the w which was due, I guess, yesterday, and such. Yes. And I'm just because I gave because I gave you the Miro link, and I'm just wondering if you were looking in the right place. I sent you a message, and I also put the screenshot where it should be sort of looking. So I'm not too sure um, if you. I will be look at it, Jeff. So uh, yeah. thank you. Perhaps I I went to the wrong place. It could be yeah. very well possible. I yeah. will take a look at it. I will give you feedback. Yeah. Uh, uh, so yep. I so so I sent you the screenshot of where you should be looking. So in other words, use the mural link and use the screenshot to orient yourself appropriately. Perfect. Thank you. So I will tell okay. you, Jeff, where people have fell on the, uh, I call it fail, but the goal of doing the lab assignment is to be able to give you feedback. And then you take that and then you apply it to your big assignment, right? So what I have seen in the, in, in the where people have uh, uh, gone to being unsatisfactory is some of the eyes were, did not look like eyes. So it was really hard for me. And I don't know if this is the case. I have to look at yours uh, back, mm -hmm. but where some people have got unsatisfactory, it was a few reasons. It did not really look at an eye and I could not really tell what level zero was, what level one was, what level two was, what level three. It's, it was hard. We, we yeah, for, for us, we had that, we had a legend for that. It was color coded for the level. Yes, but, and I will look at it. But don't yep. worry, I will look at yours, Jeff, specifically. But this applies to uh, to everybody, and uh, yep. and then this I would expect to be uh, to be addressed in the in the assignment for the AI for uh, for the zoo. Um, okay. So I should be able to understand the level without having to look at a legend. Because really, when you look at all the trees, all the IA trees, like you clearly see home, and then you see boxes and the box underneath, and then some of them sometimes are even indented. But there were situations where it was really, even that in place it was really hard. I should be able to understand the eye very quickly without having to read a legend. Because yeah. the legend gives me a signal that maybe some things are not visually alight or clear. And that is that is why sometimes uh, you may um, if, if it's difficult for me, yeah, then I, yeah. I guess I guess point being is that uh, it looks clear without the legend. The legend just helps. Okay, you know. So don't worry. So I'm, I'm, look I'm, at bit, I'm, I'm 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 a little bit lost. I'm not too sure what's going on. But um, so I sent you it in um, in the forum. Um, in the forum, I think you said to use the forum to um, uh, to send you messages. So I sent you in the discussion board. In the discussion board. Thank you. I will. Yeah. I've made a note. I will look at yours, Jeff. But uh, don't be worried. What I was saying okay. is, it's uh, and I've seen this with a few, several assignments. Uh, they were not really complete IA. So perhaps yours is all complete. But uh, don't don't think that this is only a PU. I'm saying that I have seen some of the assignments. It did not really look in an IA. It still looked like very much of the course sorting, except that maybe there was a legend applied. But uh, at the end of the day. Like it needs to look like a tree, and I need to be able to understand. Yeah, yeah. The there, there's a tree. There's a tree there. There's a tree. Good, perfect. I look forward to it. Uh, okay. But this, you know, you're not alone. This, uh, it's. Okay. But it's normal. We're doing this for for learning. But I will look at specifically yours and give you feedback, Jeff. So okay. you Great. you'll 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 know where 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 you stand and what happened. Might might have happened. Perhaps I look at the wrong place. But okay. Uh, yeah. So really, the rule with I is simple. Very simple. Clear. Some people had no level zero, and then some people had like two level zero. So this is where when I start questioning and have ambiguity, then what happens is I'm the teacher, but consider me as your client, right? So, uh, and I should be able to understand the eye with a legend um, as well. But I gave a lot of feedback specifically, and I think everybody will understand the feedback. If you don't, then please get back to me. I'll be more than happy to clarify. I will look at yeah, yours, from, Jeff. Don't worry. Yeah, from, from, from what? gathering is my team members got sat and I got unsat so I'm a little bit because we all worked on the same thing yes no worries and uh yes uh but yeah I you'll 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 understand hopefully okay. so I'll I'll be able to share with you and perhaps there's something else that I've looked but I did mark everybody okay. individually so um because mm -hmm. I wanted to you look at you, Jeff, or look at anybody else as if you were the only one doing the IA and despite of what the team has done. So I was not, for this assignment, for this lab, 
I was not so much paying attention to have you capped what you've said from the card sorting into your eye, but I will for the zoo. So I will for the zoo look at continuity and make sure that people have information architecture. If you have, then they need to have a rationale. And that's the other thing that I have found uh, in the lab, but I would say in the assignment, very important to explain the, the reasons about UI, why you've picked a certain order, why you've picked level one, level two. So uh, some people were missing the, uh, the rationale. So if there's nothing that explains to me how you've come to decision, then that is also like uh, a reason why someone may get unsatisfactory at some point too, but that would not be the only reason. There will be a few elements. So, but I will look at yours, but this is just- Okay, thanks. I need to see the rationale. It needs to look like an IA. I need to see the rationale. The box needs to be connected. So I've got a lot of labs where the box were not even connectors. There were no connectors. So uh, little things like this that makes it uh, off of what people are used to be an IA. And I've been very flexible on my marking because this is still learning, right? This is an opportunity for me to give feedback. But for the assignment and the big assignment, then I expect the I to really have all the pieces in place because you will have received feedback throughout. So point noted for you, Jeff, I will look at yours. Thank you. Okay, uh, okay so Thanks. let's look at the big project now because that's a big element. And uh, this is all being recorded. I will remind people to look at it as well on Tuesday. So the big project, you're going to do everything that you've done for the zoo for uh, into what assignment for Roots Canada. So everybody knows Roots Canada pretty much. If not, then you will learn about Roots, Roots Canada website. And when I say website, it's mobile responsive uh, website and mobile responsive. So imagine that you'll be redesigning. Now this is available online. So everybody should really go through the details with your teams and start working on the big project because there's not a lot of time. This is due for March 10. Uh, but you will have time tomorrow, uh, today, uh, not today, but you'll have time on Tuesday, I, I would say, and uh, to because we're not going to have a new material. So, uh, and I will see if there as well for this big project, but that's really the big and the final project and the piece for uh, for this class. So I share with uh, the the brief. So the brief is already in here. So I share objectives. What is it that Roots is trying to do? I don't want to cover all the objectives for now, but I'd like for everybody to give a chance to go through and then on Tuesday we can review as well as we wish. But I share company performance objective. This is all available online. So there's nothing confidential in here. These are all information that I have been able to extract on my own, uh, as anybody else in digital will be able to. And then uh, and using Google and using a few other tools. Now their main customer, uh, this is a bit of a guess, but it's based on the visuals and what I have seen online and what I know of Roots. Um, but if you guys feel that you want to put more into this, this is great too. Then I put a list of customer goals. So what I think the customer goals are when they come to Roots Canada based on the feature and the functionality they offer. I talk about the top products. And then um, I talk about the, the some of the pain points as well that perhaps Roots would like to solve. Then what you have to do is you're going to have to do court sorting. Well, first of all, understand and go through the, the brief, but do a court sorting. And, uh, and then each team member has to run two individual card sorting uh, with people not in the UXD program and not in your team as well. And then you're going to have to reconvey and reconsolidate as a team about all the different card sorting you will have done, like you did for Zoo, like you did for Nightwood. Then you do your analysis, and then you'll have a recommendation on the card sorting, final card sorting that you'll put in Mero. So my preference will be all to use Mero because I think it's a great tool, visual great tool. Then you're going to do the IA. So you're going to do the same thing that we've done. So and this, the IA, this is where I really need to see a clear IA and clear levels and uh, the hierarchy of your UI for, uh, for roots. And then, uh, and then you can do level one, level two. You want to do level three or even level four. You can't as well in the IA. And the feature list. So I want you to run a feature list. So you're probably going to come across things that you think are missing. So I will need to have this a, a complete list of or should include or remove perhaps maybe the features that you think are useless. 
I don't need to have in-depth description, but I need to understand or have a good sense of what the future is. And then your navigation. Then you're going to do a complete navigation. And then, uh, and then this can be a low fidelity prototype. To be honest, it is the same thing as this week lab. It can be a prototype where I can click on, or if you deliver wireframes and they're okay. Uh, I just need to understand why you're making those choices, where the navigation is, the different navigation mechanism you'll have, and then uh, how the behavior around those uh, those uh, navigation as well is really what I'm interested in. And then you have to uh, explain the choices that you make. That is consistent. I'll need to understand the choices, and uh, and then uh, and then this you have to. Uh, the responsive element, a responsive website, responsive element is very, very strong for this project. Uh, in fact, that's probably the main interest of Roots uh, in terms of how can we improve the responsive experience for Roots Canada compared to what it is today. Uh, and this is why I label it responsive and it's a responsive uh, website. It adds more complexity, but you, going through the step as you've gone, you will uh, be able to, uh, to put forward a, be a better recommendation. So, and then I go into more details about the final deliverables, but uh, again, it's what you've done. A brief, what happened, how you came to uh, the recommendation. If you use your template you've used for, and just replace and, and use the elements for roots, specific to roots, uh, you will do well. And if you incorporate the feedback I give you, you'll do super well. And then that's it. Like it's a, and then it's a 70 points uh, project worth 30% of your mark. So my recommendation is you should gather as a team very quickly and start talking and dividing up the work and start thinking about what you're going to do, look at the site. Maybe you want to do a quick heuristic evaluation as your team to get a sense of what maybe some of the issues are with the existing uh, Roots Canada's website. And uh, maybe you'll have to make some assumption in some places, and that's OK too, but list those as well. So consider or pretend that you've been hired by Roots to give them a better a, a recommendation for a better mobile responsive experience when it comes to the Roots uh, website as we know it today. You can look at competitor. You can do competitor benchmark as well. And you can uh, you can come out with a list of competitor, but I actually give you a list of competitor. So you can review some of the competitor and, uh, and then use them and use your finding in your recommendation. This is trying to bring everything together of what you've done in this class into a real project in Roots Canada. I'm actually, and I will tell you this, I'm using uh, Roots Canada is also our clients for my an, another class that I'm teaching with the uh, with the program. It's called user user experience design uh, in uh, organization. So we're using Roots as our project, and we're doing a big project for them, a bigger project for them. Uh, but what I have shared with you, there's nothing confidential. This is all public knowledge. Uh, and a lot of it is based on uh, me coming up with the user. I haven't shared specifically their user because they give me a user profile. But I can't share that because there's an NDA, a non-disclosure agreement. But it's so vague in the sense that you may actually have to fill it in. And that's OK, too, in terms of the user and the profiles. But I think you do have enough elements. Uh, to make good decisions and good choices. And most of it is, I would say, 99% of it is all public knowledge available. For anybody who has a bit of tools, they can find this same information as I have found. So uh, it's in some ways, it's, it's real that Roots is actually looking at a better experience. But I think everybody out there is looking at better experience and optimization and improving their product at all times. So uh, I'm hoping you'll connect with this brand. I'm hoping you'll connect with the project because it's real, uh, and uh, and we we are engaged with the team at Roots. But they, uh, I may or I may not tell them that we're doing this. Perhaps I may, but we can. We don't need permission. Uh, the school can choose to do any projects that we want, and uh, and maybe they'll be super happy, and maybe we will share some of the findings with uh, with them as well. And I will definitely give credit to to this class and this course as well for doing so. Uh, I would invite you to read in more details the assignment on your own with your teams. Write down questions, and we can talk about it on Tuesday. But this is due for March 10th. So, uh, but uh, you will have in time uh, in class uh, even today 
next Tuesday, and uh, and then the user flow for next week is uh, is a uh, easy, not difficult topic. So I would say we've covered ninety five percent of the material has been covered. So there's nothing. There's not going to be a lot of new material that will come. Uh, to uh, to you when it comes to class. So now it's bringing it together and trying to make sense and incorporate feedback that uh, that I have provided as well. Are there any questions about the the project? Which I I know they will once you go through the details. But are there any like questions that are coming to your to your mind at this point that we, you would like to ask? Are we excited? Awesome. It's a great brand. It's a Canadian brand. It's a great brand. We're learning a lot. Like we've have, uh, we've been for this other class, we've been, Ruth has been uh, our choice in the beginning of the class and we've been very, very busy doing a lot of research, doing a lot of investigation. Uh, I actually really think that this work will help, will help Ruth. So I thought it would make sense to work on Ruth's in this class. It's very relevant. And uh, and uh, it's it is work that we can also uh, use to uh, to improve the product. So it's not it's actually not going to be wasted. It's real stuff. It will in fact I think we're going to use um, to be able to uh, to do a recommendation and improve their experience as well. So it's some you are participating in uh, improving the product of a brand that exists that is life. They do have some challenges. The site has challenges. Uh, as we know, and I'm sure you'll notice it too. Okay, so at this point, then uh, it's up to you to stay. It's up to you to uh, do whatever. You can do your lab. You can work on the navigation lab. Um, if you have not submitted the uh, IA lab, which I think everybody has at this point, finish it and complete it and submit. Or you can start thinking about a big project, or you can ask me questions. Uh, I can stay uh, online here. And, uh, and then be available until uh, the end of the class, like 12.20, 12.25. I can make myself available too. Uh, or I can open up some breakout sessions if uh, anybody wants to uh, to work on items together. That's also an option. So up to you. You don't have to decide now. But we, we can be here until 12.30. And then if I see that some people are leaving, then I will. Uh, leave as well, but I can be available on through the course message. And Jeff, I will look at your uh, assignment. Yes, as well. um, it looks like I I misunderstood. I thought um, I think you were correct. Uh, it looks like I misunderstood. I thought it was uh, I didn't realize it was the um, the site mapping. I thought it was just uh, breaking up uh, the the card sort into some more. So um, like basically, all I have to have is the home page part and then I link them up basically that's basically it that that was the so um, I'm gonna so, send you that you can you know however you want to you if you want to keep it as unsat that's fine I understand um, no so I think no yeah so if you want to resubmit that's true for anybody if you want to resubmit because we're here to learn right so if you want to do uh, do uh, the IA and then yeah I'm do just all, all I'm gonna do is just put it. the I'll link. Be happy to look at it yeah, I'm all I'm gonna do is just put the lines. That's basically only the only thing that's missing is the lines to the whole like the the home uh, node and then the lines to to the categories, be the labels. That's the only thing that's missing really. So I'm just gonna put those in right now. And then I'll, I'll should I should I resubmit via that uh, discussion board thing? Yeah, what I will no resubmit through the tool. I will see. I will reopen for you to be able to resubmit. Okay. Okay. Thanks very much, Eves. Thanks. You're welcome. And if you have any questions, let me know. I'll be more than happy. Like this is why we do this, right? It's to give feedback, to learn, and for you to practice because that's the only way you will know how how you uh, how you do. And uh, this is great. Thank yeah. you for being open yeah, to it. Was, it. Awesome. So yeah, it was my I'm, mistake. I apologize no for that. It was my mistake. No worries, Jeff. There's no. Uh, it's we're a team, so you know it's. Uh, okay. There's a lot. You guys have a lot to think about. So I'm happy that you figure it out, and I'll be happy to uh, open up a new submission for you. Then uh, we're all good. good. I appreciate so, it. I appreciate it very much. Thank you. You're welcome, Jeff. Okay, great. So I can be here if 
if anybody has questions, uh, I can, uh, I probably going to turn off the cam in my mute, but I can, you guys can uh, ask me questions and I can uh, help with anything if you guys uh, want. <laughs> And if not, then enjoy your last of the last, the rest of your week and the weekend, and uh, and I'll be providing feedback on what you've submitted. I look forward to looking at this, the uh, the assignment as well. And uh, we always at the end. I know it's a busy class, but uh, well deserved. You guys have done good work.